is Becca, and today we are not gaming. We're doing some crafting. If you're interested in cosplay, if you're interested in crafting, and if you are interested in spending as little money as possible, then this is for you. So we are going to make some paper mache tiefling horns. So this is my tiefling. So you see she has ram's horns. She's a druid, so the flowers are there. But we're gonna be adding the flowers later and painting. Right now, with this, uh, we're going to start off just with the construction of horns. Things you're going to need. To attach the, uh, the horns to your head, you're gonna need a headband or a bunch of bobby pins. You're gonna need soft cardboard for construction of the horns. You will also need a glue gun. Ooh, it got trapped. You'll need a glue gun. Uh, lots of glue sticks, probably. Something to draw out your shapes with. Obviously something to cut it out with. And then I also have painter's tape. If you're going to be uh, using tape, it is important that you use masking tape or painter's tape as opposed to just the regular tape you would use to package like presents um, or you know stick stuff to paper because um, this is meant to withstand a certain amount of moisture and wetness. I think you also need unbridled enthusiasm and belief in yourself because otherwise it's never gonna happen. Um, so I was looking at what I could use, how to kind of figure out how big I wanted them, and then I just found one of my hair ties, uh, like rubber band things, you know, and I realized that this is actually probably a good circumference for it. I held it up to my head and I was like, oh yes, this looks like a good circumference. So step one in, in what I'm making up right now, I don't know how many steps there are. I'm gonna very easily create a guide for the circumference of this. So we finished measuring out the length of our hair tie, which is gonna be the circumference, or I guess the circumference of the hair tie, which is going to be the circumference of our horns. And this is going to be our guide, so I'm going to just write that on it so I get it. Guide. And I know this is my guide and not just like a throwaway piece of cardboard. This with the cardboard is the base that we will build the paper mache on top of, and the paper mache is where we're going to give it all that texture. So let's get started. I'm just going to pick a corner and use a pencil to trace out. Okay, so I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna make them kind of like scales. Um, so one will fit into the other. You know how scales get that layered thing? I'm gonna do that and make kind of pointy shapes. I'll show you in just a second. Ta-da! Here it is. This is gonna be the first part of our Horn. and this doesn't look anything like how we're going to make it look but this is important this also just to note whenever I bend it I'm gonna make sure this like the the side the printed side is facing out I think that this is gonna stand up a little more to the water and liquid than this side because this is coated so it'll be another barrier between um, the or for the paper mache to go on to we are going to then put this into the shape of those horns. Um, so I'm gonna very slowly be curving it. Um, you wanna do it slowly because if you do it too quickly, it won't curve, it'll just bend uh, like with a, with a crease in it. And we don't want that. Oh, and you know what I should have done that I didn't do? I should have made it just a little bit longer because now this one is going, I'm not gonna have any overlap. Back up, back up. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Okay, so you see, very curved, and it naturally will go when I curve it. Okay. This extra room here is so that we could shape it to this curve. Okay. So this is going to come down. I kind of curved the shape of the headband. And it's going to come back down on this side in about the same angle. So hopefully when we look at that, it will make a nice 
arc that is very similar across it. Yes. And look how that fits so nicely. Perfect. Here we go. Yes. It is a little bit really tall. And this, obviously, my horns are a lot bigger. If you want to make smaller horns that just kind of like curve around, if you want like little pointier horns, um, you could also obviously do that with cardboard. They just do the same kind of like gentle coaxing it into the shape that you want and then paper mache for the texture. Um, if I had little horns, I would practically be done with it already because I could just make the little horn, figure out where I want it, you know, what the angle I want it to be on my head, and then you could even leave a gap at the top if you can't get it to get exactly to the right cone shape. And then just paper mache the crap out of it until it's exactly how you want it to look. Next. And so now I'm just trying to get the right sizing. Um, and I'm just trying to get the right angle for it that I feel will be best. Cause this is on my head like this. So I need it to start curving back. So it's probably gonna sit in it like this, as you can see. All righty, all righty, all righty. So there we have the first part of our horn. And I think it's going. I'm going to make the next one do the same kind of curve thing out of this one. And the next one maybe do it a little more like this because eventually it's going to turn around and then come around. So up here these few are going to be all the same size-ish and then it's going to start to get smaller and curve around and then that's where the tape is going to be even more important. Becca, why is your hair weird and why does it look like you just woke up and why are you wearing different clothes and what's going on? Why is everything different? Well, it's a new day and I did just wake up. Here they are. They look kind of silly. I look kind of like I'm a very patriotic tiefling right now. So we're moving on to the paper mache. Paper mache is like one part flour, one part water. Uh, so equal parts, flour and water. But this doesn't get moldy, it doesn't get gross or anything. Um, it just gets hard. It just makes it have like a hard exterior that's easy to paint. Uh, so, way easier than painting this stuff. So we're gonna get into it. I cut a bunch of strips of newspaper of different sizes. These strips are going to be kind of for the base. Um, I'm gonna cover, just cover the base and get the basic shape with this and I'm gonna sculpt a little with it um, because right now the horns are just kind of like round but there are some like ridges, like thick ridges I'm gonna make with this. Thinner, like there are thinner ridges throughout the whole thing. I think I'm gonna use paper towel and kind of scrunch that up to make the, the rippling effect. Um, and if that doesn't work then maybe I'll use some hemp. Uh, and wrap it around to make kind of the ridges on it. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take some uh, wrapping paper. Here, I'll grab a sheet just so you can see what it is for right now. I'm gonna take this wrapping paper. It's just plain, you know, like tissue packing paper uh, and cover the whole thing. This will be the final cover in it. Um, that way, like all the sculpting will look like it's part of it rather than having the lines visible between where the base is and then the sculpting is. Um, that way also when I paint, I'm not going to have to paint over the dark colors that come ooh, uh, with the newspaper. Um, and it's this nice light color that will be really easy to paint. So, let's get started. This one's looking pretty good, huh? Look. Look. Look, it's looking like a horn more and more. I think the, the ice cream boxes kind of throw off the vibes. Good thing we're covering them up. Look like so much better already just being covered in this first layer of paper mache. So I'm getting really excited about it. It's looking good, you guys. Let's hope that it keeps looking good and doesn't start looking really bad.
All right, so now we are done. Oh man, the headband is so wonky. But we are done with the, the ribbing, I guess, with what I'm just gonna call that. And now we are moving on to the final, oh my gosh, it's about time, the final stage of the paper mache process. Alright, so now I'm obviously wearing different clothes. I showered. My hair is just as crazy because that I'm I'm losing my mind. But I finished all of this. I finished it a while ago and it is mostly dry. So right now as we have them, this is what they look like. So I think so far pretty dang good. However, it still really just looks like paper mache. Um, even though ram's horns do tend to be lighter, uh, my tiefling does not have light horns. So, I have some palette paper here. We are going to paint them. I'm just using acrylic paint on this. Um, there are probably more ideal paints to be using at this point, but you know what? Who cares? So the painting now is done. Here, I'll hold it on its wobbly broken. There they are. And then I'll show you what the whole outfit looks like in just a second. And here are the final horns, you guys. As you can see, I think they turned out pretty well. My face looks really red and soft with a shadow, but you know, it is what it is. And as you can see, they are connected not by my headband, but by a string. I hot glued loops to each side, then tied those loops together with the string. Bobby pinned that in. Hot glued two more loops on either side here, and then Bobby pinned those in and then covered up the string with pieces of my hair so I have some really weird parts going on. Those are my tiefling horns and super easy cardboard paper mache. Ooh, lots of hot glue. And again, an unbridled enthusiasm and belief in yourself. And anything is possible. So I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you liked it, would you please let me know that you did? Uh, and if you would like more videos like this, or just, you know, other creative videos in general. And I hope you guys have a super great rest of your day, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!